Now this problem is a lot like the other ones that we've already done. You want to get your x by itself. Your x is in the middle. Keep it in the middle. So step by step, what would you do? You want to move the 8 away. So subtract 8 from all, all three parts of the inequality. And what does that make my inequality look like now? Negative 25. Negative 25. Right? Negative 25 is less than or equal to negative 5x, which is less than 50. How do I finish getting x by itself? You add 25. If I just have this inequality right here, how do you get x by itself? You would divide by the coefficient of negative 5. And of course, I have to do that on the left side as well. So when I divide by negative 5, what does my inequality look like now? Less than or greater two does not, it does not exist. You know what I mean. What? I don't know because <laughs> here's the thing. You're dividing by negative now, aren't you? Less than or equal to. Hold on, though. You're dividing by negative, so the inequality symbol changes. Oh, you're less than or equal to five. Greater than or equal to x, which is now greater than. Negative ten. Now look at the inequality. Is five greater than negative ten? No. Yes, 5 is greater than negative 10. Would you rather me give you $5 or take away $10? 5 is greater than negative 10. Now, so we can put this in an order that will probably make more sense to us. Rewrite this. Negative 10, look at the way the inequality is written. How would you rewrite it if you flipped it around? Wouldn't you put the x first? The x is in between these guys, so you can't really put it first. Less than x, which is greater than or less than or equal to five. Less than or equal to five. Inequality of statement was true here. Five is greater than negative ten. It's still true here. The negative ten is less than five. So, what do you think that means on my number line? Negative ten. You don't have to flip it, do you? What do you mean flip it? Um, uh, you, I don't have to rewrite it this way. Yeah, you don't have to. But I'll tell you, a lot of students that go from here to here have the numbers backwards. So I'm going from negative 10 to 5. I'm including everything in between. Am I including the endpoints? Five is included, but it's negative 10. No, I don't get to be equal to negative 10. So how do you write this using interval notation? Negative 10 to 5. Yep. Yes, question. Instead of writing it like you have where, I have where you have negative 10 yep. is less than x and that, I just, I guess, flipped it and wrote it as two separate. x is less than or equal to 5, and then x is. Now, if you rewrite this as two separate ones. I look at that and I, I, I could get confused looking at that, but in my mind, okay. I have two separate. So if you rewrote this, you say x is less than or equal to 5, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And make sure you have the right word there. The other part says x is greater than negative 10. So greater than negative 10, less than or equal to 5, it's going to be the same so thing. It's not, we're not going to be cowered off if we write the two separate no. rather than just the one. No, but I do want you to know, you know the connection from here to here. Mm -hmm. I think that's good for you to know. And the reason why you wanted, you started uh, <laughs> by subtracting 8 on, on all ends is because you want to get negative 5x by itself. I'm trying, to, right, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to isolate the x up here. And, and so if I have just this inequality here, 8 minus 5x less than 58, I would subtract 8 on both sides. Then I would divide both sides by negative 5. So the steps that I would take to solve that inequality, I'm going to use over here as well. What you do to one part, you're going to do to all three parts of this inequality. I'll, I'll start originally subtracting 8 minus 5 to get 
three eighths. So it's like wrong. You can't do it because they're not like terms. Right. Don't subtract eight from every term. You subtract it from each side or each part of the inequality. 